You've heard the recent story. If not here, then probably somewhere else. The news recently broke that the sun produces a super flare about once a century. Geologic isotope data had previously suggested the Earth takes such a hit every 150 to 200 years, and since some of those once a century blasts would miss the Earth, these guesses pretty much agree. And it was interesting as a space weather guy to watch millions of people discuss and ask and comment on the subject over the last two weeks since the news broke. The best question is what are the chances of this happening soon? taking out all the circuits via solar EMP and sending us back to the Stone Age, killing potentially 90% or more of the world. Well, with the last one of these already 166 years behind us, we're due, if not overdue. But the reality is actually much worse than it would seem at this point. Because Earth's magnetic poles are moving faster and faster, and the magnetic field strength is weakening, we are in the process of a geomagnetic excursion right now. This will drop the field strength dramatically. It has already begun. And that leaves Earth more vulnerable to these solar storms, especially our technology. Folks, this chart is all about increasing vulnerability of Earth to solar storms in the ongoing magnetic pole shift as the magnetic field weakens our shield against space energy. On the left side, the Y vertical axis is the magnetic field strength, where up top we have the normal full field strength like we had about 200 years ago and for a couple thousand years before. At the bottom, that would be the worst of the event during the actual reversal process. The X axis, going horizontally, is the chances that a solar kill shot event will occur that the EMP delivered by the induced geomagnetic current will kill global grids, devices, etc., sending us back to the Stone Age. The curves all bend to the right as they come down. That's as the magnetic field weakens. The chances that a given solar storm will cause considerable damage goes up as the magnetic pole shift draws near. That's what this curve of increasing vulnerability due to the magnetic pole shift looks like. The types of solar blasts that the article was talking about, those once a century super flares, those would be like an X100 or larger, maybe as small as the last big blast in 1859. That's the Carrington event at the Black Hash Line. Notice how some of the flares that wouldn't pose much threat under normal conditions would potentially be kill shots during the pole shift. Unfortunately, that's where we're headed right now, and the space weather is showing it. The big aurora event in May 2024, that's this purple hash line here. It was actually the combined impacts of three small CMEs, and even combined, they represent only a tiny fraction of the power of the 1859 Carrington event. But it produced an equivalent, and in some locations, excess auroral displays, even despite increases in light pollution, making it harder to see. That's what this entire pole shift thing is doing to the auroras. The purple hash line event acted much closer to what the 1859 event on the right did in terms of auroras because of the weaker magnetic field of the earth. So perhaps you might be asking, where are we on this chart right now? Well, that's a good question. With the governments of the world not updating how much we've lost since about 2010, we have to extrapolate and that we should be somewhere in this area of the purple box, somewhere between 25 and 40 percent lost. My best guess would be closer to 30 or 35 percent, and you can see that the curve's likely inflection points are around halfway to reversal, about 50 percent down. So I guess to answer the original question, we are due for one of those once-in-a-century super flares, maybe overdue. And we wouldn't really even need to have it to have the same effect because Earth's magnetic field is weakening. As the magnetic excursion progresses, eventually, big super flare or not, the sun is going to cook the grids. For observers who know about the KP index, this is the same concept with the KP, the Geomagnetic Storm Index. Similar concept, and it is important to note that these are just best guesses, both this and the previous chart. They are informed by my 15 years of space weather analysis and what few papers on the subject exist, but they're probably pretty close. The point is that, yes, we are in fact due for the big one from the sun, but with Earth's magnetic field on the decline, 
we've got the effects on our bingo card either way. Subscribe and I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe everyone.